Burgess here with Music Marketing TV and today we're going to be looking at how to add some interest to your tracks with M Rhythmizer. Let's jump right to it. Okay, so I have here two M Rhythmizers and let's just start off with what they sound like to give you an idea of what the plugin can do. So I'm going to turn off them first. So this is what it sounds like with no M Rhythmizers. Right now I'm going to go ahead and add them in. This is what it sounds like after. Baby. Baby. Yep. So what you're hearing here is there are two of them. There's one on these pads up top and there's one on the hi-hats. So the hi-hats were originally just playing straight eighths and we're using it to generate random rhythms. Uh, just to add some interest so you could slap this on a loop and it will create additional interesting variations and then for the synth line we are tossing this on this is doing a time manipulation so there are three jobs M Rhythmizer really does M Rhythmizer can manipulate time it can manipulate volume and there's a filter it can also change so the way that it controls these three things is there is a graph here and this graph dictates how it's going to move in time volume and filtering. So in the time graph, we are basically able to have it play back at a regular speed, which if we go to C1, is just a flat line. So this is the original pitch. And let's in fact, let's go ahead and solo this. So we can have it do interesting things like do a repeat. So flat lines essentially mean constant playback. So what's going to happen is, is this is going to get the audio as a buffer. It's going to receive it and then it's going to be playing it back, you know, regular. And then all of a sudden it's going to go back in the buffer, back to the beginning right here. So this is essentially going to play what was being played right here again. So we've got different variations of this, but any sort of a stair step pattern is essentially going to equate to a repetition. When you have a lot of them, it ends up sounding like a stutter. Like so. So this can wreak all sorts of interesting effects on drum loops. So it's really fun to mess with in a live setting. You're able to link this up to a MIDI controller so that when you play notes or pads or whatever, it'll trigger that particular thing. And this can create a really interesting way to interact with loops live. At the bottom, we have more interesting graphs. So if a straight line means constant playback, a curved line would mean that it's going to speed up or slow down through that playback. And when I say straight line, I mean like a, a horizontal line. So if we go to 50% speed, you notice that it's going to be playing back at a constant rate. The slope of a line, right, is constant, but it's going to be doing that at a slower rate than the rate that it was getting before. So this is essentially a slower speed, it's a negative slope. A positive slope would equate to an increase in speed. So I was using this one earlier. This is just a really nice way to get a half speed effect. You could go to 200% speed. Got a repeater here. So you've got some things that are named, but you can do interesting effects too. So what if you have a curve? Well, it's going to ease in or ease out of a certain uh, playback if that makes any sense let me just show you we've got scratching so you see these are curves so since it's curving it's going to ease in and then ease out ease in then ease out we're going to get this scratching like effect so we could do uh just a sort of if we were to magnify this we could sort of control this ourselves but that is the notion of how these graphs work. So for me, that's the important part of the plugin is when you look at these, you can go off the names and just hear them. But now you also have some sort of idea of how this time stretching thing is working. And you can go ahead and make your own. Like here we can see we'll get some sort of a slowdown and then because we're going down and then we're going to get a speed up. And since it's not a straight line, if it were a straight line, it would just be one speed and then another speed. It would be like two snap settings. But since this is curvy, we're going to ease in and ease out. So it's going to be kind of like a scratch effect, sort of. There you go. 
And this is again something that if you drive it with MIDI, it makes a whole lot of sense. Up next, we've got volume. Now volume is extremely straightforward. So, you know, here's zero dB, so no volume change, and then we can take away volume. So for example, we could go to Transgate 2, just a different rhythm. Oh, let's go to the time domain and leave it on. Let's go back to 50%. So you've just got all these options here. Of course, anything that's like a line will be... Uh... So these are all gates. So with this one, of course, if we had like a line or something, that would just be a decrease in volume, pretty much as expected. The filter is controlled pretty much the same way. You do need to have the filter area on, so if it's off, this won't do anything. So we're gonna go ahead and enable it, and then you could come down here. Let's pick one where we can hear it a little easier. So it's oscillating between two values. We could have it go up and down. We could go over something with some teeth. Do we have teeth? Yes, we do. If we open up the advanced area, you get additional options. You're able to offset where the filters happen and all sorts of goodness here. There are options for days in these things, but that's the general gist of these three. And oftentimes when you come in, you're gonna find something that you like in here that'll do pretty much what you want. You can always make your own. So that's the gist of how these three areas work. And honestly, if you've got these three areas down, you've got the plugin mostly under control for the majority of what you're gonna wanna do. Now there are tons and tons and tons of additional features <laughs> this can do. So let's take a look at just one of the many things uh, that we have at our fingertips. So if we come over here to the hi-hat and we'll just go ahead and uh, unsolo that and let's uh, grab the M rhythmizer. So this one's doing some interesting stuff. So notice that the volume is just at C4, it's not doing anything. And the filter is also blank. And by the way, you can open up like banks of presets if you want and uh, rename stuff. And I mean, it could get really fancy. You can pretty much customize it how you want. And you can see this one is scrolling all over the place through stuff. And this is selecting different stutter patterns that it is using to play back the hi-hat in an interesting way. And this is actually a preset if you're so interested in checking it out. It's called Transceiver Air. So, you know, it's kind of like a stuttery kind of effect, so kind of cool. And it's doing a chopping effect again because of how we talked about with the time envelope. So how is this thing, you know, moving around on its own? Well, this is where we get into the more advanced stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the multi-parameters. And multi-parameters are like macros, but a lot more powerful. We're not gonna dive into everything multi-parameters can do. We're gonna barely scratch the surface. So you notice this first one is on. It's been named to errors. We have a second one called speed. So we're able to adjust the speed that this sort of changing happens at. So you see it's slowing down. We speed this way up again. It's just gonna be flipping through. And let's go ahead and click on errors. It opens up a editor for the multi-parameter. So inside this editor, you can see the modulators, the sequencer, and another modulator. So there's two modulators that are on, and then the time is what we're affecting. So that's why this time sequence is moving. You could come in and add the parameter of choice. In this case, we've got time. And then we've got these two modulators that are doing things. So where are the modulators? Because this kid, if you're not used to Melda plugins, they all share the same uh, GUI format. So once you know one, you know them all. But at first, you're kind of like, where, where are the things? So if we open up the meters and utilities, so now we're getting a pretty big plugin. Uh, we've got here mod one and mod two in the utilities, which might also be closed. So if you open this up, you've got these two modulators. So this modulator is just a, a random sine wave, essentially. So what you do is you come in here, and this is already going to be set up because of the preset. But in case you're wondering how they get this, well, if you take the step down, you get the sine wave shape and you're able to move it around. But if you move the step up, it creates all these crazy looking steps. And you can smooth and unsmooth it. So this is just essentially how we're snapping between everything. It's selecting according to that uh, multi-parameter. It's moving around according to when it reaches a new spot. So you can see it's coming through. And you may notice I'm not able to change the frequency. It always goes back to what it is. And you might be wondering why is that? Well, that's because we saw that there was a second modulator. So if we go over to mod two, 
we see that on mod 2, we're controlling the frequency. So to demonstrate the speed change, as you can see here, we have frequency. It is extremely slow, and we can move up and speed it back up like so now when you start going up it begins to freak out a little bit and part of this is because for example if we go all the way up to a thousand you can see that it's apparently actually slowed down you might be going what's the deal with that let's come here and check out our speed multi-parameter and we can see that this is also scaling what's going on here so let's open this up and see that the max value and the min value for parameter one parameter two. So if we change these, it'll open us up to faster ranges. However, it doesn't appear to be that useful for the particular effect that we're going for. And the reason for this is because we want when we move our parameter, it to have a useful range. If we have it just go off to oblivion, it's going to just not be very functional. So that's why these things are in here the way that there are. You're able to set these limits. But in case you ever see a, a behavior that's limited when you go to the modulator, uh, it's worth checking out what the macros are doing and what the other modulators are set to because the multi-parameter could have some sort of limiting in it. The modulator could. Uh, so if you see, if you're opening up a preset and you're kind of wondering why can't I change this here, chances are it's probably actually in one of these that is going on. And you can see they're usually renamed, but you can see this is moving around like crazy. Let's hear what this sounds like. Yeah, so I mean, with this particular thing, it's not going to sound totally insane because it's just a bunch of stutters, but it does make sense to have a slower thing and to come in and adjust the macro way down to something more reasonable. In fact, even, whoops, that was the wrong one, huh? Even lower. So that's M Rhythmizer. If you have too much on your screen, you can go ahead and sort of shrink some of this back down. It's just keep your keep in your memory where stuff is at. And that's pretty much it. I mean, the basics of working with it are really just knowing how this graph works, volume filter. And then if you want, you can dig into the modulators and the, the uh, multi-parameters as you get more and more advanced. But as you go through presets, uh, you can really just find all kinds of really cool uh, presets that will sort of just demonstrate to you techniques. And hopefully now you have the tools to be able to digest what exactly is going on. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos. And have a blessed day.